Hey, everybody, welcome out to the very first edition of Smell What the Pots is Cooking. We're going to have some uh, great uh, conversation, a little bit of debate tonight. And um, we're going to talk a little bit of ideas. But first, I'm going to let our guest um, introduce herself. First off, I'm your host, uh, Tony Potts, a student at the University of Georgia, getting his master's degree in middle grade education. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, um, social issues and politics and a little bit of fun. Maybe talk some sports in there too. I know our, our guests are all sports fans. So uh, let's let's start with James. Tell us a little bit about you, buddy. Uh, call me Jim. Uh, Jim or Jimmy or James or whatever uh, floats your boat. Um, I am a a uh, teacher of children with uh, behavioral disorders. Um, originally from uh, born in Alabama, lived in Georgia for many years, and uh, looking forward to interesting debate. Abid, you're up. Yep, my name is Abid Bawa. Um, lived in uh, lived in Rome, Georgia, since 2003. I've been a business owner, and uh, also now I work at the FLS Transportation, formerly Scott Logistics, as a uh, uh, strategic sales um, a sales manager. And uh, I've been a been an American citizen uh, American citizen now since two, 2013. I was born and raised in Canada. And awesome. I immigrated to the United States legally and lawfully. Didn't, <laughs> didn't hop any borders. I uh, did did it the right lawful way. So, all right, now right. very proud. Very been up until now. Been very proud of that. But uh, over the last couple of years, I've been questioning that move. Oh, so we're we're gonna have some good a good conversation, dude. <laughs> dude I'm, I'm 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 love I love the fact that I'm a citizen, but I question the 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 fact that I did it lawfully and legally. Oh, well, well yeah. yeah. Right. And our fourth guest, uh, below me, it says iPhone too, but uh, Jerry Duke, uh, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is uh, Jerry Duke, go by JD. Um, so I'm not on video right now. I'm currently uh, at my farm and uh, been a division director for a major fireworks company, but uh, for all intents and purposes, I've retired from that and currently uh, doing the homestead life on a farm in Alabama. Um, <laughs> Uh, a little bit about me previously, lived in an Amish community for uh, a little over a year in Pennsylvania before we moved back to Alabama. And uh, I, I guess I could say I'm about as conservative as they come. And you've had a little bit of law enforcement career too, didn't you? That's right. That's right. I was in uh, law enforcement for about seven years. Um, and you and I know each other. We were in radio for many years together before that. So we, we've got some uh, all across the spectrum I see Jim up there, so I mean, it's going to be kind of fun. <laughs> All right, well, well, let's start with an easy question, like, since this is uh, media in itself. Uh, do you guys think media is fair and balanced, or do you think both sides takes a, a particular side, or, or where can we get fair and balanced news? Who wants to go first? I, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in. Oh, boy. I'll, I'll jump in and start. I mean, you know, Tony, you and I both have a news background, and I like to think that, that you know, when, when we covered things, you know, it was on a much smaller scale, not on a national stage by any means, but when, when we covered things, we tried to approach stuff with uh, with a fair and balanced outlook. But you know what? Uh, it's funny that, that this comes up now because I just read a story, uh, what was it, yesterday or day before where news broke that uh, um, – uh, NPR, uh, someone actually came out that, that been, had been with NPR for 25 years and, and, and kind of exposed some things and said, hey, look, you know, out of the 30 journalists in the newsroom, every single one of them is a Democrat. And even Juan Williams, who, who now works for uh, Fox News, you know, he he jumped in defending and, I, and forgive me, I don't remember this person's name, but he jumped in defending the a uh, person who came out and said, you know what, you're absolutely right. And, and Juan, by no means, is a conservative. Uh, but, you know, he even pointed out that, that there is bias and, and you see it across the board. But you know what, I, even on the flip side, when I go to news every day, I go to CNN and I know what to expect. I go to Fox News. I, I know what to expect to an extent, but I, I kind of see a, a little bit more of a, a fair picture painted. Now, B and Tony, you may have other opinions on this, but, you know, it, it depends on what you're looking for. You have to be able to read between the lines. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, there is, over the last, uh, I guess, 
I mean, since when when I was a kid, I just remember, you know, Walter Cronkite, he would just tell tell facts, tell story, tell them tell like it is. Now the media has its own agenda. Uh, you know, they want to get ratings. Now you have uh, plenty of bias on both both sides. You know, CNN, like uh, at, at Planet Fitness every morning, you know, you have several TVs, but you have CNN and Fox News side by side. And um, the headlines are just, uh, you know, uh, Fox News right now is doom and uh, showing doom and gloom, you know, with, uh, you know, the border, uh, the border crisis. And, uh, you know, that's all you really see over there on Fox and uh, all the the Biden, uh, the Biden gaffes and CNN, you have all the uh, you have all, the, all they're fixated on everything about Trump and everything about uh you know, minorities being uh, just being nothing but victims. So that's that's their fixation, you know, to K to the CNN, you know, pandering to the left, the Fox pandering to the right. Um, where I get, I actually prefer to get my uh, sources, uh, my media from uh, overseas sources like uh, Yon News, WION, which is, I think, uh, out of India, um, uh, you know, like, more foreign foreign news sources are more uh, reliable and more accurate just as far as telling the story. And they're not like, you know, fixated on certain, uh, certain agendas. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when it comes to the United States. Right. Jim? Well, uh, the truth is out there. Uh, the problem is um, the truth <sighs> doesn't sell. Um, I think that once we started having pundits. Well, they they used to just read the news, tell you what happens, and then uh, you made up your mind about whether what your opinion was. And uh, somewhere along the lines, they decided that okay, this happened. Now we're going to have this person to come in and tell you why it's really terrible or why it's not that bad. And I think that uh, I, I haven't. I have kind of a unique. Uh, perspective on this my brother is getting his doctorate he wrote his doctor he's he's uh he is a uh uh cyber security uh well he's now head of soci- cyber security for nasa now he just got the job recently and uh when he was getting his doctorate he actually did his doctoral thesis on um bias and how the media changes people's mind and how information gets shared and how things different uh uh obvious uh, he's the smart one in our family so i'll go ahead and tell you that one but he, he uh when i read it it was uh, it was i thought some of the things he found was pretty interesting like he did a survey he actually paid a survey oh, company to do a much broader survey than i think his professors expected but um they they're going to publish his uh, doctoral thesis and one of the things that always that stood out to me is uh, when they called all these people uh, they asked him if they thought the media was biased. And an overwhelming percentage of them said yes. And then the next question is, does the media that you uh, take in, the media that you watch, are they ba- are they uh, biased? And the majority of them said no. <laughs> did, did, did so I, think- thought that was, I thought that was pretty telling about how uh, I don't like – I, I, for years, I was among the Fox News watchers. Uh, I have a strange uh, 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 kind of transformation into my political beliefs over the past uh, 10, 15 years. And uh, I realized that the the uh, Bill O'Reilly's and the, uh, you know, they, they had, you know, they have that list of, of 30 minute shows. And I felt like the entire purpose of those shows was to make me angry and to uh, uh, watch the only people that are talking about this. And um, the more I looked, the, the more I uh, changed and, and did my own research, as they say, uh, I realized that it, it wasn't necessarily false, but it was twisted just to make me angry. And so I kind of turned that stuff off. And then CNN did it. MSNBC does it really religiously. And so you can watch all of those things and get the news. But as soon as they bring those pundits on, 
that's when I changed the channel. You, you know, though, I mean, it, it's it, both a beat and Jim kind of touched on it. You know, you talk, you think about like the Walter Cronkites and, and in in the news from from years ago, they pretty much just gave what happened. But it's it's really been a fascinating transformation because you know they talk about the pundits. Yeah, that that you know that's that's been going on for years. The pundits, you know, you you would get your news, they would tell you what happened. The pundits would come on and discuss. But if you if you notice in the last I don't know what ten years or so that there's 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 a blurred line between the pundits. And the people who are giving the news, even even the news readers, and I'm doing air quotes now, or the or the news personality, <laughs> you know, they're they have in essence become pundits themselves because based on, you know, whether you're watching CNN or Fox, even even the ones who are reading the headlines, they still have an opinion, and and, yep. and that line is now blurred. I mean, there there's, uh, for, you know, so I I can't remember the name CNN. What three or four years ago they hired a new news director. And this is when ratings were, were Fox was just trouncing him. He was going to come in and he was going to make it more fair, more balanced. And, and I, I hate that I don't remember his name. Um, but what, two years ago, he, he was run out of town. You I mean, they fired him. I mean, I, I and, and if you watch CNN, it still didn't really become more center it was still further to the left and but but you know the, the the anchors and the personalities they had that was too much and you know the same thing could happen at fox you know if, if rupert murdoch for some reason sold fox news suddenly they moved to the center i mean that you're probably going to see the same thing i mean i think people want to hear things that back their ideas back their sports they don't want to hear the news they want to be entertained more than they want to see the news now i think that's that's what it's come to before. Yeah, it's we, our we, fault. Yeah, I, I think it's hundred percent our fault, and, and mm -hmm. we're, we're asking for it. You know, there's you know just a handful of select you know fair and balanced news services. You know, locally, Coosa Valley News is probably the top notch news source and that I that I've read. Um, and you know, so I mean, people really want to. I, I forget which one of you guys said it, but they want to hear things that they want to hear, and if it's against them, they're going to turn the channel and call and it. Five. If it's not their idea, they're all, that's bias. How dare them? You know, and no you know what I, it is. It, I think it all boils down to an entertainment value. Yes. But but people, the society has changed. You know, it, they look at it almost, and I hate to say it like this, but almost like a sport. They want their yes. team to win. You know, and and they want to hear they want to hear what what they agree with. They want to you know live in an echo chamber of their thoughts. Yeah, they want the confirmation and, bias. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you hear an opposing um, viewpoint, you want to shut it down. You know, you're at that point, you you go to the sports analogy and you're losing. You you need somebody in there to win, you know, to get your side across. Well, well speaking of winning, let's let's ask this question. You know, the United States, you've got to be 18 years of age to vote. And Abid, you're, you're probably going to be interested in, in this question, you know, being, mm -hmm. you know, an immigrant to this country. You know, we allow 17 year olds in Georgia to go to jail. 16-year-olds in the state of Georgia can legally consent to adult activity. Um, you got to be 21 to drink alcohol, 21 to use tobacco, 18 to vote. Is this fair? What should the legal age of Georgia be to, to vote? Should 16-year-olds have a chance to vote or is 21? What, what, what is the correct <clears throat> Should be 31. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> no, I mean... Uh, you know, 18, maybe 21, just because people are so less engaged and knowledge in um, polit and candidates right now. Um, you know, the candidates aren't really reaching out to the young like like they they should. Um, you know, I mean, does a 30 or 40 year old really know what they're voting for? No, no. I mean, uh, how, how are we going to say a 16 year old does it? True. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, like, you know what? Just uh, you know, keep it keep it at eighteen. I guess uh, there's just less engagement with you know uh, every, everything is all like party identification is what is what people vote on more so than the candidates. JD, Jim. You know, I, uh, that was never true for me. Uh, I, I was never um, actually. I did try uh, when I was in college to go to a couple of young Republican meetings 
And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of appalled at what it devolved into. But that's the only time mm -hmm. I tried to identify with a party. I was always like my, mm -hmm. I, I, the first time I was able to vote was Bill Clinton's second term. And I voted for Bill Clinton because I thought everything was going pretty well. Now, I think 18 is a good round number um, because you can say, you know, we can go down to 16. or we can, Well, the point is, I think there has to be a cutoff. And if you go to 16, why not 15? I mean, it's, it's kind of arbitrary the younger you get. But, but I can tell you everything. the young people that I know, the young people that I know of that age group, uh, especially my uh, my nieces and nephews and whatnot that are of that age group, my niece especially is very uh, conscious of politics and uh, she is very engaged in it. Uh, as a matter of fact, she got so engaged in it while she was at college, she wanted to she she changed from just having a major to a double major and and did poli sci as her second major um now a lot of people i think the problem with young people voting and younger younger people voting you end up with double votes for what the parents are it's kind of like a religion man how you grow up in your house that's how you're going to vote and it's not necessarily, of course, it's not everybody, but I think 18 is a good round number to, to cut off. I definitely don't think it needs to be any higher because if you can get drafted, you need to be able to vote. Yeah. And, and I agree. You know, I joined the military at 18. I think 18 is a, is a, is a good age to, to be able to, to vote. But, you know, I think more importantly than age, um, because you could argue this either way, more importantly than age, you, there's a couple of other, factors i think that that uh um we need to watch out for for instance the indoctrination of students in colleges you know uh, by and large the vast majority of colleges you know it, it, it's like a liberal bastion of indoctrination uh for the students uh the other thing is um you see on on the left you, you have more and more uh politicians pushing uh for illegal immigrants to be able to vote you know, sure, you, you, you like a bead said, he came to this country legally. If you come to this country legally, you become a citizen. Absolutely. You should be able to vote. But but this this push for, for, for be able to vote if they enter the country illegally. I mean, that's that's on a whole nother level. And I mean, that could be a huge conversation in itself. But I think those are the two most important things we need to watch out for or talk about. All right. I would like to be combative on those points. Uh, <laughs> I do not believe colleges are indoctrination centers i believe that i went to three different colleges i never had a professor ever say anything to me that to try to change my mind to how i was politically what i did do is moved out of my little bubble of trying georgia uh and go and meet people that i had never met before types of people that changed the way i felt about issues about their rights about how uh, their that what came how their lives how I had completely misrepresented in my mind of how they became who they were, and being around other people is what changed my mind. And it was during that time during college, so I can understand if some parent sends their kid to college and they come back and have a lot of different ideas that they think college did that to their kids. Well, it was the people that did it for me, and I've never heard anyone. Uh, as many of the people that I follow that are like on Twitter, uh, other social media accounts, I've never had anybody say we need to let illegals vote. I think that is a right wing. Um, you better watch out uh, replacement theory thing that I don't think is fair or realistic. I mean, I, I have to disagree. I mean, you know, I, I've gone, I, I went to in, in, you know, I went to a lot of schools. I went to Shorter University, Liberty University, American Military University, um, and and it's not always um, the overt actions, but just you know a, a, the classes that are offered. It's just there's there's a lot of liberal left lean in colleges, and in it surprised me going to Liberty University. That's a that's a Christian college. Jerry Falwell, you know, as a shorter. Yeah, absolutely. Shorter, uh, probably not as uh, not as um, I don't want to say hardcore Christian, uh, but but 
there I don't think there's any debate or there's not much debate unless you're on that side of it that, that the vast majority of college campuses lean heavily left. I just I just disagree. Uh, uh, most most of the most of the most of the teachers see it's gotten so badly bad with the with the that's that's part of the reason that of my shift of beliefs is I also have to hear from people when they find out that I'm a teacher that I am in some part of indoctrinating young people. I do not have time uh, to get out to step outside of my cur curriculum and try to gain people into my uh into my beliefs uh, i do not discuss my beliefs i will not even tell the kids who i voted for um but just and, and the fact you know that i'm a teacher in a public it, public school i must immediately assume that i'm part of this indoctrination and i never saw it in college now the colleges i went to were not christian universities they were alabama public universities and i realized that that small bubble of uh, of, uh, of, uh, it, it doesn't encompass the entire country, but, uh, listening to people explain to me that when, that I went to college and I came back changed and I agree with them, I had, but it had nothing to do with this school. Now they have to offer all those liberal arts, uh, degrees and things to keep their accreditation, to keep their, uh, people want to go to school for different reasons. So those classes have to be given. All right. Let me, let me, I'll, leave it, I'll leave it at this, Tony. I'll just say, you know, if, if you want to watch some fascinating videos, go to YouTube, uh, look at several of the uh, the college discussions that, that Ben Shapiro puts on or Candace Owens or. Oh, or, my God. Uh, it's just it, and, and it's not it's not leaving to what they say. Just listen to some of the listen to some of the students and some of the stuff that they that, that they throw out there. It's it's fascinating. All right, we're, yeah. we're going to run out of time. We've only got like um, nine minutes left, so we're going to move on. We're going to have about a minute apiece on the, on these next couple. Just make sure we, we get everything, gentlemen. Um, real quick, are unions helpful or hurtful, and how do we create a society that is both fair for the employees and employers? Quickly, uh, both. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 there shouldn't be a need for unions. If... Uh, uh, companies and the owners of companies treated their uh, workers with respect and paid them fairly. They wouldn't need unions at all. The fact that it, at different times in this country, there has been prob it's been problematic for them to get their bargaining rights, uh, then sure, they need them. Um, I've never been a part of a union. I've never had the opportunity because I've worked in Alabama and Georgia. So, all right, Abena. Yeah. Uh, I would say unions are more hurtful. Uh, you look at uh, the states that are uh, union friendly, you know, they suffer. You look at, uh, you know, like states that are that have weaker unions. Um, they, they're, they're the ones that are prospering, you know, Georgia, the southeast, uh, especially, you know, you have um, business, uh, business jobs. Everything seems to be doing a lot, a like, lot better in the south. Uh, more companies tend to be moving south, southward. Uh, because of uh, the of the lack of uh, strong unions, um, do I think the unions at one point were needed, um, but they've uh, they've done what they needed to do. Now, I think competition, fair, uh, you know, free enterprise should be the one to dictate that. You know, if uh, if there's a more more competition um, for for jobs, you'll have uh, better pay, um, you know, employers are going to offer better pay and better wages when you're, when they have competition, when they have, uh, you know, when, when there's a, there's a, a labor shortage or a skilled labor shortage. And, um, that's, that's, a the thing with, um, that, that's what, what, uh, what helps with, uh, with growth. Teddy? You know, I, there was a time and a place for unions. I, you know, there, Years and years ago, I, I can't deny that, that um, the unions did a lot of good. But uh, right now, in, 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 the, in the market that we have now, uh, free enterprise is, is the best um, leveler of the playing field. I think, I think uh, unions have, have evolved into, um, 
a way to strong arm employers. And I, I don't think it's helpful. And I agree with the B, you know, you, you look at a lot of the states that the unions aren't as strong and, and, and it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just a better environment. 30 second, Jim. <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh, I don't think that's uh, realistic. I think that uh, most of the southern states are at the bottom of, of, of most metrics of what is uh, in pay, in uh, success, even in education. Uh, if we're going to be intact, we're going to let them do what they want to do. They're going to do it. It's why uh, if there was an educator union in Georgia, I would be in it. Because as long as people think yeah, that hey, you're you you're it's your calling, then they're going to pay you like you did your calling. And I I mean that's just you know that's me as a teacher. But like, <laughs> I mean that's that there's lots of industries where they will pay you as lowly and as they can get away with. And I think that's a problem across the country. Fifteen I, seconds. Somebody's rebuttal. Fifteen seconds. I'll follow up by saying that that good luck paying someone as low as possible in this labor environment. I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, free enterprise is the only way to do it. Uh, that's the only way that, that a business is going to be successful and unions are, you know, they're, they're, they've killed a lot of businesses. All right. With society transforming each day and civil rights debut um, debates always engaging, how do we honor and respect those um, trans lives, um, LGBTQ plus, how do we recognize their and protect their constitutional rights? while respecting those who disagree with this lifestyle. We've only got about four minutes, so each of you only have one minute for this. So. I, I, listen, I it, everyone, no matter what your um, what your religious preference is, what your sexual preference is, whatever you identify, you know what? Everyone should be respected. They should have their constitutional rights absolutely protected. The the line that gets crossed or where 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 it bothers me is when you expect me to recognize something that's that's not true. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to identify yourself as, whatever you want to do, whatever you, it, it you know, my mom used to say, whatever floats your boat, whatever floats your boat, but don't make me float your boat. All right. I got a B. You got one minute. Yeah. Love everybody. That's, uh, that's what I do. You know, when, um, uh, Everyone has a right to exist, and um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as far as LGBTQ folks, you know, they're 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 people uh, as well, and um, you know, we respect uh, you know their um, their beliefs, and um, you know, we have our everyone has their own beliefs, and and how everyone lives how they want to live. All so right. Um, All right. that's Jim. One minute. Yeah, like we said, I think everybody has the right right to live their life the way they want to, as long as they don't hurt anyone else. Um, did, did, I did, think the only the, the fight for the rights comes from. Uh, I don't think we would hear so much about it if people weren't trying to take the rights away. And trying to take the rights away is where I kind of draw the line myself. I mean, let them be who they're going to be. Um, I've never met anybody that was gay that told me that they turned gay by something. It was always, hey. When did you figure out? You know, I've always known. So, should, should, should transgender be allowed to play in other sports? Um, it depends. There's, there's so, there's so many different. Uh, you got thirty seconds. There's so many different levels of that kind of stuff. Like you have people that are on hormone blockers that make them uh, unable to play at, at high levels, and I, it, I think that that transgender in sports is something like we. We did something about it in Georgia, but it wasn't an issue. We didn't have anybody trying to do that in Georgia. So there wasn't really that. It kind of ruined girls wrestling, to be honest with you. Abed? Yeah. Uh, they should have their own category. That's that's how I think it should be. Uh, that That's how all the problems will be solved. You know, you got uh, male, female, trans. Boom. Jenny? Tony, if Mike Tyson put on a wig, should he be able to uh, spar a female boxer? Absolutely not. Uh, you mm. know, it. It, it it I hate to say it, but you know it, it's an unfair advantage, no matter which way you look at it. And if we continue down this road, you're you're going to ruin all sport. All right, um, you got everybody's got twenty seconds. Final thoughts, Jim, you're up. Well, I 
I don't know. I, I don't like, uh, I love being an American. I love where I live. I'm proud to be here. And uh, I, I wish that uh, the people running for office could run on their ideas instead of it's either me or everything goes to hell. All right. I'll be 15 seconds. Yep. Government just needs to stay out as much as possible. We, um, you know, give us our liberties back. Um, All right. I got, I got to catch you off, JD. 10 seconds. I'm, I'm as conservative as they come, but uh, America has lost the statesman when it comes to politics, and we need to get that back. Hey, smell what the pots is cooking. Hey, thank y'all. I appreciate That was fun. No I wish we had longer. My, my time was clicking. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, man. I, I probably ran off at the mouth a couple times and got you off guard. <laughs> so that good. Did everybody enjoy it at least? Yeah. 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 Right. Yep. All right. Well, I appreciate oh, yeah. y'all so much. Hey, no problem.